Hello and welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. On November 17th, five children were found dead in this dumpster in the city of Bijie, a city of seven million people in Guizhou Province. Now, the five boys had died from carbon monoxide poisoning after trying to light charcoal inside the dumpster to stay warm. The news was publicized on Chinese microblogs, leading to much soul searching from Chinese netizens and the sacking of several officials from the local area. Here today to talk about this issue, we have Jason Ma and Karen Chang. So one of the things that you know, this is obviously a horrible tragedy. But one of the things that people、uh, in China were saying is that this wasn't really an accidental death. Yeah, it's kind of、uh, the way they died is a tragedy. It's kind of a kind of a accident. But、uh, this kind of happen is in ev-、uh, in、um, inevitable. inevitable. Yeah, it's a、uh, how to see that. I mean, basically, these kids, I mean, five of the kids. Uh, but four of them, their parents are working in Shenzhen, which is a kind of a big city, kind of a thousand miles away or kind of hundreds of miles away, and they seldom see their parents. They just live by themselves. Um, uh, the youngest one is nine years old. Even the oldest one is like twelve, thirteen. They just live by themselves,、uh, stay at this kind of、uh, almost empty house by themselves. And so this kind of thing is、uh, almost everywhere in China. When people consider China has a kind of a cheap labor, why China has cheap labor? Because、uh, all those kind of Chinese policy, because of economical reason, because of who co kind of a reason, and only young people, strong people, can move to the city, live in the city, and then have find a job. The kids and they have to leave their kids, their parents stay in the rural area. And when there are two million cheap labor in China. The consequence, the other side of the whole thing is、uh, there is、uh, another probably、um, like 300 million people stay in the in the rural area, with can、kind of、separate from the family. This kind of kids alone is about they consider as 50 million, and this kind of four of these kind of、uh, five kids belong to this category of.、Uh, Five fifty million kind of they can stay at home kids. They may not see their parents for a couple of years. They totally on themselves, and they grow up like、uh, sometimes they have kind of pretty caring、uh, relatives. But sometimes in this case, there nobody can take consider them. They grow, they, they live and die like wheat. In in this case, it just happened they move to the city like a bag or kind of try to find food in the city and died in the city. People begin to realize there is kind of a group of people like this. But if they died at their rural village, nobody knows. That's it. So the、um, the rural urban thing you're talking about, Huko, like the resident registration system,、right. where like if you can't. Uh, you don't have the registration. You don't have the huko. You can't get like social services in the area. You can't go to school in that area. It, is that the kind of like the fundamental problem that that led to something like this happening? Right. I guess that's one of the reason. I mean, basically, it's、uh, like for in this case, it's、uh, both reason. Their parents, the kids' parents, are working in the city, but they are also very, very low-income people in the city. And right now in China, it's different. Like Indian, you can move the whole family over there and build something very kind of shabby. But you can have whole family live in something, and then sometimes a slum. But after several generations, you can grow out of the slum. But in China, because of the, they want to maintain the beautiful. Kind of image of the city, they don't allow anything like that. So if you want live in a city, you have to rent an apartment. But renting an apartment in in the big city is so expensive; it's impossible for. So the only way they can stay in the city is five or twenty people live in squeezing one small room. And in that case, it's impossible to bring the kids over there. So that's economic reason. But of course, who co? The registration system is also a reason, because if you don't have local registration, you can't put your kids in the local school. You have to go to more expensive, like a private school or something. So in that case, it's impossible for them. So all these kind of reason together make sure just forcibly separated the family, produce this whole generation of Chinese kids, rural kids who grow up without parents. Fifty million right now. That's a number. I mean, in China, they're called left behind children, so、right. they even have a, a name.、Uh, there's so many of them.、Mm-hmm. But、uh, let me ask Karen about the family.、Um, you know, Jason mentioned that these five kids were kind of left mostly on to their own to like grow up by themselves, take care of themselves. Now, like 
some of they had like an elderly grandmother or something like that. But um, reports say that she wasn't really like really able to even take care of herself, mm -hmm. let alone like take care of like these five boys. Now, why didn't the family ask for help? Could there could they ask for help from someone? Well, it's interesting when the local media went to interview the the family, uh, the uh, local city official also went along as well, and they wanted to give them some money for compensation. And the one of the aunties of the boys basically said, you know, we can't take this money. We've already caused so much trouble for the government. So for them, they really don't think that going to the government is something that can help them. They think they've inconvenienced the government. Um, for, for a lot of Chinese people, when they want to have something resolved, they don't think of going to the government. They think of going to the government as something that may actually bring them more trouble. So it's it's not really a system where they have an external place for help if they have, uh, you know, other family members in the area that they can help with the kids, then maybe they can. But in this particular case, basically, the kids had no external support. Right. It's kind of a not like I think a lot of people consider like, OK, this happened in China because China is poor. Um, no, I have to say like the local government is a very, very rich. The local government budget is about uh, five to six billion US dollars a year. And when this thing happened, in order to kind of uh, like to show, demonstrate they are really pay attention to this, they said uh, immediately, Within two days, they said they said to put aside uh, 10 million US dollars, like as a special fund for these kind of kids. And uh, I guess there's no any other kind of local government in US, like a county level government, can immediately, like within two days, uh, fund like 10 million US dollars uh, put aside for a special situation. But they can. And, uh, and also, you can see the picture of their kind of government uh, kind of building. It's splendid. I mean, it's kind of a uh, like, uh, like I don't think any kind of U.S. kind of a county level government can have that kind of thing. So, so my understanding is that it's not about uh, they are poor. It's more about the distribution of the wealth in the system, and, and even the separation of the city life and the rural life is a, is a kind of a surprising. Like, uh, because the kids were living in the rural area, but the, that their village is only 15 miles from the center of the local city. The people in the city average income is about uh, 2,000 to 3,000 US dollars average income. In the rural area is like uh, less than 200 a year. In this, so basically it's kind of a, it's a more than 10 times uh, uh, difference within 15 miles. It's, it's just kind of a distribution problem. It's, it's not about uh, they are, have no money overall in China. It's more about the distribution, more about the separation of the rich and the poor. So let me ask, um, do you think that local officials can be held responsible for this? Because when we saw, uh, you know, after the fact that they basically sacked eight local officials, including everyone from school principals on up uh, to somebody in charge of like civil service affairs in, in the local government, like, can we hold them responsible for uh, not taking care of these kids? Well, I think we kind of have to look at it from the perspective of what could they have done? Is this something that's part of their performance appraisal to make sure, you know, all the kids are taken care of? Uh, is there like a, lo uh, a, a, a local organization that can look after the kids. There isn't because this kind of thing doesn't really figure into how higher level officials um, grade or, or appraise their performances. So I think for these eight officials that were either suspended or sacked, they were kind of being treated as scapegoats. You know, we have to blame someone. So let's just, you know, target these lowest level officials like principals and, and the officials that you mentioned before. But aren't local governments responsible for uh, providing these kinds of social services in China? Right. That's kind of a funny situation right now. I mean, the central government uh, several years in 2000, uh, in 1994, they have this kind of uh, uh, separate kind of the role of the central government and local government. Uh, they put more and more this welfare kind of burden to the local government. Uh, but meanwhile, they take uh, kind of more than 50% of the tax or other income into central government. And But in meanwhile, they tell the local government, uh, you can make money out of this development, land, sale land, those kind of things. And uh, so basically, and also meanwhile, if you really need money, central government can really kind of uh, give you some money. And uh, in this way, the central government will have a stronger control of the local government because the local government sometimes depends on the central government. The consequence of this whole thing is, uh, um, although the local government do have the responsibility to care of the poor people, but they have this decision. There's no law to decide what kind of level they should uh, kind of uh, uh, help those poor people. So they can help whenever they want. End up, uh, there's almost zero help. The poor people are still poor, but meanwhile, they 
do have the chance to develop and sell land. So, for example, local government sell a lot of land, kind of make a lot of money off of this real estate development. The, every year, the, the real estate development is about 10 billion a year in this area. Meanwhile, the central government, they, because of this special area, they got like uh, two to three billion from the central government for this kind of uh, welfare city system. But it's, uh, the local government just kind of uh, consumed it, and it didn't really trickle to the to the people. And of course, this whole thing is also kind of uh, decided by this system, because of the central government. Uh, uh, kind of uh, have this kind of system and they don't have this monitor. Meanwhile, um, China has no monitor system like the median, like the uh, independent group. So everything, the central government is kind of decide what, which, what kind of money I give you. The local government decide how I spend my money. And when the people have no say in any aspect of the whole thing, that's what will happen. I mean, people live in such a poverty. And meanwhile, the government is in such a kind of rich, kind of splendid lifestyle. So, yeah. And I think even though the um, the media is, and the local officials are saying we're going to put aside this $10 million to help the poor kids, um, I've already started to see um, this trend in the media where they're trying to place the blame away from the government and onto the family. On, on Saturday, there was this People's Daily Opinion piece saying, you know, in this tragic case, we can't ignore the responsibility of the family, basically saying, you know, the kids could have gone to school, even though the uh, parents had to go away to work, they can't just, you know, basically leave their kids to be. There is a certain level of responsibility for the family. So they're already trying to create this um, sense where it's, you can't blame the, the government, it's the family, the parents are somewhat responsible. Almost out of time, but I just want to ask quickly, do you think there's a solution for the problem? The solution is a bigger picture. I mean, the kids should be with their parents, but uh, the current economic model doesn't allow that. And uh, how to solve that? That's a worldwide problem. It's kind of a, when people kind of China shoulder 80% of manufacturer of the world, and this is happen when you think China has the cheap labor, the cost of cheap labor is the kids at home. So, I mean, there is a solution. The problem is whether the, the central authorities and the people who can make those uh, decisions want to carry out that solution. So that's basically the situation. Right. It kind of government should give the kind of make the labor in China not that cheap so that they can afford to live in the city, at least in a very low level. Or they can get rid of the hukou system, make sure the kids, when kids get into the city, they have a school to attend. So this is something that government can do, but meanwhile, China will lose their cheap labor. So they'll lose their economic uh, engine, basically. Engine, right. All right. Well, thank you both for joining us today and talking about this issue. And thank you for watching. For more on this and other topics in China, join us at ntd.tv.